Boeing just lost their only way to space. Atlas V, the rocket carrying their $4.2 billion Starliner, is shutting down with only nine launches left. Each test burns one rocket meant for astronauts. Here's the brutal irony. SpaceX, who's crushing Boeing in the space race, might be their last hope. But would Elon Musk really save his biggest competitor from total collapse? What happens when Boeing runs out of rockets completely? Let's dive right in. Here's the terrifying math Boeing discovered too late. Atlas Fiki has exactly nine rockets left in existence. Each Starliner mission burns one rocket forever. Boeing needs six more flights to complete their NASA contract. But here's the kicker. Four of those remaining rockets are already promised to national security missions that can't be moved. That leaves Boeing with maybe five rockets total. One engine failure, one weather delay, one technical issue, and they're dead in the water. But wait, it gets worse. Every day, Boeing delays cost them $2.3 million in contract penalties. Every month they wait, SpaceX launches 15 more Dragon missions, proving they don't need Boeing at all. The death clock is ticking, and Boeing is running out of time. ULA promised Boeing a solution. Vulcan Centaur, their next-generation rocket. On paper, it's perfect. More powerful than Atlas V, designed for crew missions, ready to save Boeing's program. Reality check, Vulcan is trapped in certification hell with over 24 missions waiting in line ahead of Boeing. Amazon alone booked 38 launches. The military has priority for everything. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser has been waiting since May 2025 for its debut flight. But here's the real shocker. Even if Vulcan gets certified tomorrow, Boeing would be customer number 63 in line. At ULA's current production rate of two rockets per year, Boeing wouldn't fly until 2056. You read that right. 2056. Most people think switching rockets is simple. Just strap the capsule to a different rocket, right? Dead wrong. Every rocket has unique attachment points, separation mechanisms, and structural dynamics. Boeing's Starliner needs a custom-built adapter, like a tailor-made glove that must survive 4,351 pounds of pressure per square inch and temperatures hot enough to melt steel. Remember the Xbox controller analogy? Try plugging it into a PlayStation while both are exploding and astronauts' lives depend on a perfect connection. Boeing already spent three years designing the Atlas V adapter. They'd need to start from scratch for any new rocket. Testing alone takes 18 months minimum. Certification? Add another two years. But here's the terrifying part. The adapter must support Starliner's launch abort system. One calculation error and the emergency system designed to save astronauts becomes their death sentence instead. While Boeing drowns in red tape, SpaceX's Falcon 9 launches every 2.7 days like clockwork. It's already NASA certified for human spaceflight. It has the power. It's available now. The ultimate irony? Boeing's biggest rival might be their only salvation. But would Elon Musk really save his competitor? Business history says absolutely. When Amazon needed launches for Kuiper satellites, direct competitors to Starlink, SpaceX took the contract anyway. In July 2025, SpaceX literally helped Jeff Bezos try to destroy their own market dominance. If that's possible, Boeing hiring SpaceX isn't just realistic, it's inevitable. But there's a darker reason NASA desperately needs Starliner alive. Political tensions between President Trump and Elon Musk have been escalating throughout 2025. Industry insiders whisper the real fear. What if political drama kills the Dragon program entirely? NASA has depended on SpaceX for over a decade. If Dragon disappears and Starliner isn't ready, America loses access to space completely. We'd be begging Russia for rides again, just like the humiliating years after space shuttle retirement. This makes Starliner more than a backup. It's national security insurance. NASA will do whatever it takes to keep this program breathing, even if it means the unthinkable, calling SpaceX for help. Meanwhile, SpaceX faces their own crisis that changes everything. Ship 36 exploded during testing on June 18, 2025. The blast didn't just destroy the vehicle, it damaged the entire Starbase facility, 
and delayed Starship development by months. NASA is getting impatient. They're counting on Starship for the Artemis three moon landing in 2027. Any more delays could kill humanity's return to the lunar surface. Suddenly, SpaceX needs good publicity and stable contracts just as much as Boeing needs reliable rockets. The two rivals might need each other more than anyone realizes. Jeff Bezos just changed the entire game with one massive bet. Amazon's $10 billion project Kuiper secured 38 Vulcan launches, plus the final nine Atlas V rockets. They also pledged $2 billion to upgrade ULA's infrastructure. This cash injection is keeping ULA alive, but it's creating a dangerous dependency. ULA now prioritizes Amazon's satellites over everything else, including Boeing's crew missions. Here's the brutal truth. Amazon's timeline called for satellite deployment in 2024. They've only launched 54 satellites so far, while SpaceX's Starlink has over 7,000 satellites serving 5 million users worldwide. Amazon is losing the satellite race, but their deep pockets are destroying Boeing's rocket supply. Talk about unintended consequences. Here's what nobody tells you about rocket certification. It's not just paperwork. It's a life-or-death process that takes years. When NASA certifies a rocket for human spaceflight, they're literally betting astronauts' lives on their analysis. Every component gets tested to destruction. Every failure mode gets analyzed. Every emergency scenario gets simulated hundreds of times. Falcon 9 earned certification in 2020 after years of testing. Since then, it has launched dozens of astronauts with zero failures and a 99% plus success rate over 400 flights. Vulcan has flown exactly twice. Even with perfect performance, human certification won't happen before 2027 at the earliest. Boeing simply can't wait that long. But here's the twist. Adapting Starliner for Falcon 9 would still require 12 to 18 months of testing. That's still faster than waiting for Vulcan, and the rocket already has a proven track record. Boeing's space division is hemorrhaging money like a punctured fuel tank. The Starliner program has already cost $1.5 billion more than NASA originally paid. Every delay adds millions more while generating zero revenue. Boeing CEO Kelly Ortberg keeps promising that fixing the thruster issues is straightforward. But the company has been making identical promises for over a decade. At some point, Boeing's board will ask the brutal question, is this program worth saving? The full NASA contract could generate hundreds of millions in revenue, but only if Boeing can actually deliver flights. If they can't launch, the contract becomes worthless paper. Meanwhile, SpaceX prints money. Dragon missions generate steady revenue while Starlink brings in billions annually. SpaceX can afford to help a competitor because they're already winning the space race. There's a classified reason the Pentagon quietly supports Boeing's program. The Department of Defense has deep concerns about America's dependence on any single launch provider, even SpaceX. Military satellites, spy satellites, and national security payloads need guaranteed access to space. If SpaceX faces technical problems, political interference, or company-specific issues, the Pentagon needs alternatives immediately. ULA traditionally filled this role, but Atlas V retirement creates a dangerous capability gap. Vulcan isn't ready, and other American rockets are too small for many military payloads. This is why keeping Boeing's space expertise alive serves national security interests far beyond transporting astronauts. The underlying technology has military applications that could prove critical in future conflicts. So here we are. Boeing faces an impossible choice. Swallow their pride and ask their biggest rival for help, or watch their $4.2 billion program die a slow death on the launch pad. SpaceX holds all the cards. They have the rockets, the certification, and the track record. But they also have their own problems with starship delays and political tensions. The question isn't whether this partnership makes sense. It's whether either company can afford to let pride destroy their mutual interests. With America's access to space hanging in the balance, the stakes have never been higher. What happens when two titans are forced to work together? That's exactly what we're about to find out. This isn't just about Boeing versus SpaceX anymore. We're witnessing the birth of a completely new space economy where yesterday's competitors become tomorrow's partners out of pure survival necessity. Boeing's Starliner crisis reveals a deeper truth. No single company, no matter how powerful, can dominate space alone. 
SpaceX learned this when Ship 36 exploded. Boeing learned it when Atlas V died. Even NASA learned it when they realized political winds could ground their entire crew program overnight. The real winners? Companies that adapt fast and swallow their pride. The losers? Those who let ego destroy opportunity. What fascinates me most is what comes next. If Boeing does partner with SpaceX, what other impossible collaborations are we about to see? Will Blue Origin start launching for competitors? Could NASA fund multiple private space stations from rival companies? The space industry is evolving faster than anyone predicted. Traditional boundaries are crumbling, and the rules are being rewritten in real time. What do you think? Should Boeing bite the bullet and call SpaceX, or double down and wait for Vulcan? Drop your thoughts below. I read every comment, and your insights often spark our next deep dives. The space race just got a lot more interesting. Blue Origin just pulled off something that made SpaceX executives lose sleep. Seven BE-4 engines, fully assembled, ready for Mars. But the timing reveals a desperate truth. While they were taking photos, SpaceX built 100-plus engines and dominated space. Can this last-ditch effort save Blue Origin, or did they just prove it's game over? Let's dive right in. Those images Dave Limp posted weren't just corporate flexing. They were a declaration of war. Seven BE-4 engines, each costing $20 million, sitting ready in their Rocket Park facility like sleeping giants waiting to wake up. But here's what sent shockwaves through Hawthorne. The timing was surgical. While SpaceX celebrated another Starship explosion in testing, Blue Origin quietly revealed they had real, flight-ready engines. Not prototypes, not test articles. Production engines ready to fly to Mars. Each BE-4 generates 550,000 pounds of thrust, enough power to launch a Boeing 747 straight into orbit. Seven of them together? That's enough raw force to move mountains. Literally. SpaceX suddenly realized they weren't just competing with another space company. They were facing their worst nightmare. A competitor who'd been quietly solving problems while they made headlines. Here's where this gets absolutely insane. Those seven BE-4 engines represent six months of Blue Origin's total production capacity. SpaceX builds that many Raptor engines in a single week. One engine per day versus seven engines per six months. The math is devastating. But wait, there's a twist that changes everything. SpaceX's Raptor engines have exploded during tests, failed during flights, required constant redesigns. Elon Musk himself admitted they've had to cut engines open for repairs. The Raptor 3 looks like a skeleton compared to earlier versions because they keep stripping away parts that break. Blue Origin's approach? Each BE-4 is handcrafted perfection. Months of assembly, extensive testing, zero tolerance for failure. They've been building these engines for over a decade, perfecting every component. So who's winning? The company that builds fast and breaks things, or the company that builds once and builds right? The January 16th failure might hold the answer. New Glenn's first flight should have been Blue Origin's triumph. After 20 years of development, Jeff Bezos's rocket finally reached space. The world watched as this massive vehicle performed flawlessly until the landing attempt. The booster crashed into the ocean. Mission failure. The post-flight analysis was devastating. Three BE-4 engines failed to reignite. Propellant management systems malfunctioned. Engine control went haywire. The very engines Blue Origin had spent years perfecting were the weak link. SpaceX fans celebrated online. Blue Origin can't even land a rocket, they mocked. Stick to space tourism, Jeff. Industry experts whispered that Blue Origin was finished. How could they compete with SpaceX when their crown jewel technology failed on the biggest stage? But what if that failure was exactly what Blue Origin needed? Look at those engine photos again. Something's wrong. Five engines are wrapped in protective covers. Two face away from the camera. Why hide certain angles? Industry analysts who study the images notice modification marks on the engine bells. New wiring harnesses. Updated control systems. 
Fresh wells where there shouldn't be any. These aren't just seven engines sitting in storage. These are seven solutions to the January failure. Every engine has been rebuilt from the ground up using lessons learned from that crash. New ignition systems based on failure analysis. Improved propellant flow designed to prevent the exact problems that killed the first landing. Enhanced engine control algorithms that can handle the conditions that made three engines fail. Blue Origin didn't just replace broken engines, they built better engines. August 2024. NASA's escapade mission to Mars. Twin spacecraft designed to study the Martian magnetosphere. If Blue Origin succeeds, they beat SpaceX to the Red Planet. Think about that headline. Blue Origin reaches Mars while SpaceX still testing Starship. Elon Musk has obsessed over Mars for two decades. It's supposed to be SpaceX's destiny, their ultimate goal. But Blue Origin could get there first with a mission that actually works, while SpaceX is still figuring out how to stop Starship from exploding. The pressure is astronomical because Mars launch windows only open every 26 months. Miss August and Blue Origin waits until 2026. That's two more years for SpaceX to catch up and potentially leap ahead again. But there's a problem that could destroy everything. Where's the booster? We've seen the engines. We've seen the upper stage. We've seen the payload. But we haven't seen the massive first stage booster that actually gets everything off the ground. Building a booster isn't just assembling parts. It requires months of integration, testing, fueling trials, and static fire tests. We're already in late July. The August launch window is weeks away. If that booster doesn't appear soon and pass all its tests perfectly, the Mars mission gets delayed. Delay the Mars mission, and Blue Origin loses their chance to beat SpaceX to another planet. But here's the part that should terrify Blue Origin executives. They're not just racing SpaceX, they're racing physics itself. We've seen the engines, we've seen the upper stage, we've seen the payload, but we haven't seen the massive first stage booster that actually gets everything off the ground. Building a booster isn't just assembling parts. It requires months of integration, testing, fueling trials, and static